Yo, Spatchcock Nation, we are live and killing it. We got our guy here, Kyle and Sarah. So Kyle, I've known from back in the day. And first, before we get started, I'm going to shout out this t-shirt because restaurant, restaurants can't work from home. My man has set up this awesome program where he's raising money to help out restaurants because this guy is a restaurateur. He's a classically trained chef. He's an advertising guy, he's a social media icon, and he's an all-around instigator in the best of ways, right? He gets the best out of people. He's a thoughtful, like, inclusive dude. And um, we are pumped to have this dude on the show, man. Kyle, how you do, baby? Good, man. I just want to say, you look, you sit up there, you're looking pretty buff. I mean, the mohawk is a new look, but I don't know, you're looking like the COVID has been good to you. You're training over there or something. I don't know what's going on, but looking good, man. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Well, you know, yeah, man, I mean, I'm trying to, like, um... COVID, like every morning I'll go running and I can't go to the gym. So I left kitty litter in my garage because I can't get weights through Amazon. Um, and then I eat, I eat healthy Monday through Thursday and then drink and eat my face off Friday through Sunday. You know what I mean? That's a, it's, that's called balance. Yeah, I like that's it. That. I might adopt yeah, that model. I like that. I like having the definitive end. So that's perfect. I don't get any bigger or smaller. I just stay the same shape, but I mean, <laughs> you know. Maintaining. It's ma you're in maintenance mode. That's what it is. Trying to maintain Sweet, this lifestyle, yeah. dude. So um, here's the deal, right? So what's, what do you have going on right now that you want to tell people about? Like, what's a big deal? Like this, like this T-shirt, the things you're going on. I mean, you have this great ta taco restaurant, um, your hands and all sorts of real estate. But what's something, some of the movements you got going? Because I see you all the time online, connecting with people, bringing people in. What's up? You know, I think my overarching thing, whether it's with real estate, which is my, my full-time job is, is working as a commercial real estate advisor for emerging restaurant brands, um, is, you know, I, when I started this, I said I had a goal, you know, you have to have something in mind other than just trying to transact on deals. And with my restaurant background was, I want to reduce the failure rate of restaurants in this country. So that was prior to COVID. So that was already a pretty big task given what, you know, the, the failure rate of restaurants. Um, so it's become a more monumental type challenge to try to tackle on a day-to-day -day basis with so much information coming, um, all sorts of different things being thrown at restaurant tours that they have to adapt to. So, um, you know, that, that's my goal, no matter if it's with social media, if it's in my own restaurant or if it's with real estate is to get as much information out there as possible and provide my, uh, experience and my insight of what I think is going on and what I think you should do as a restaurant operator, um, particularly right now. Well, I mean, you know, like we have, we were lucky enough to be a guest on your, your, your podcast, the National Restaurant Owners Podcast, which um, now is more valuable than ever for all the people that you're helping and, you know, to keep restaurants in business because the times, the times are difficult and I know it's going to come back and in the, the real estate market, you were saying earlier shifting, but um, a lot of us in the, in, in the food industry, I mean, I'm, we're tangentially in it because we're just food influencers. So we don't have, we don't, right. we're not at, we don't have the risk, but you know, we do a lot of work with restaurants and you know, you don't want to see good people that work their asses off being taken out by someone that's out of their control. Yeah. You know, I think that's one of the things that is going to be most important when you come out of this uh, or, you know, as an operator now, um, I, you have to stay informed and you have to be on top of it, whether that's with your PPL loan, whether that's conversation with your landlord, whether that's, you know, what it means to bring back your employees, what it means in terms of, you know, SOPs, standard, standard operating procedures around what this new world looks like. Um, but you gotta be informed and you gotta stay on top of it. And it's a challenge, but you know, it's, um, it's your business, right? You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to feed your family. No doubt. All right. So let's jump into this because we want to, we want to feed the people some good content. And you're one of the funniest people I know, dude. So let's jump into it. So first we got MFK. Um, you know the deal. One, you have to have a healthy, long-term, monogamous relationship with one uh, amorous one-night stand. The other one you have to murder. So here are your choices. Um, as a food guy, you got Bobby Flay, Guy Fieri, or Tom Colicchio. And I got three dudes. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'm marrying Tom Colicchio. That dude can cook. It's worth keeping around. Um, can, can I curse on this? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so oh, yeah. I, fuck, I think I think Guy Fieri, you know, he's the good. He looks like he looks like he's the so crazy to say. He looks like the good time guy, right? And then Bobby Flay, I kind of always like. I don't know about kill, but I just kind of always rub it the wrong way. I, 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 that, that would be it. Marry Tom, uh, At, fuck, fuck Guy Fieri, and kill Bobby Flay. Take that. Uh, all right, all right. Okay. That's um that that's an interesting <laughs> answer, dude, for sure. Because uh, so this is a hard one because I like all three of these dudes. Um. And it's hard though, because like, all right, so first, 
I got to do something with Guy in the mix because the, he's just an overall good person. Like, you, you, you hear these stories, and he's not promoting it about him, like, going no. to some firehouse in California, you know what I mean? And just or, – or, or showing up to people's yeah. restaurants and, like, just helping them out. So the goodness of him I really like. Um, he's got a crazy style that sometimes I vibe with, sometimes I don't. Um, Bobby Flay also does cool things for the community. He can be kind of a dick, but a funny dick. Um, yeah. And – Colicchio too. I mean, he's also a pretty great cook, but I, so this is really hard. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to marry Bobby Flay. Um, I'm going to F I'm going to, yeah, because you know what? Like um, I watched that show with him and his daughter bouncing around New York city and he seems like he's cool with the people in the restaurants. Yeah. So I'm, I'm aboard that, but I'm definitely going to F guy because I mean, you know, something, I mean, flavor town is going to be off the hook, dude. Yeah. He's, um, he's the man. I, I'm not taking that away from him. And I, I guess I got to kill Tom, which is tough because like, uh, you know, this restaurant that has the beef tongue and everything, it's just like, it, it's it's like next level shit. So that's a hard one, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know what? The funny story about two of those guys, one, Tom Colicchio, when I first graduated culinary school, I called over to Kraft looking for a job. That's how, how you did it back in the day, way back in the day. And um, yeah, yeah. I was back and forth. What you have to do in a restaurant is you have to trail somebody. You have to say like, hey, all right, I'm going to come in and work for free. But you're already working somewhere. So you have to play this game of like, hey, I, need, I have to go to the dentist tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit late. And I already done a trail at another place the day before. But this was like craft, Tom Cleek. I'm like, yeah, I want this. I want this trail. But I couldn't miss work. And I decided to pass on it. So I called him and I was like, hey, is there any chance I can reschedule? It was Tom Cleek. You know, he was taking the phone calls. He's like, wow. Is there any chance I can just reschedule this to another day? And his, only, his response to me was like, look, do you fucking want to work here or not? And I was like, and I just like total emotion came over, you know, where you're just like somebody cursed at you. You're like, no, I don't. And I just like, that was it. And now he's Tom Clicchio and I'm, and I'm me. So there we go. That's wild, dude. All right. So that's one story. You said you had a story about another one of the dudes too. Uh, no, just a buddy of mine. He's done some Food Network stuff and said that behind the scenes, Guy Fieri is like one of the nicest guys in the world and does everything to help everybody and like, if he feels like you're getting somehow wronged by somebody like a cast member stone shade on you or whatever, he's like, he's like the principal. He's like the, the papa bear there and kind of makes sure all the new guys are protected. So that's a cool thing about him. Yeah. I can see, I can see both of those stories being, being legit just from what I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's an interesting story. So another thing that I want to find out from you now um, for the people that are, that are viewing on this. So Kyle and I go way back, like we graduated college, like homeboy was just like a star football player at, Franklin Marshall, um, go dips, dip set. And um, <laughs> we started working advertising together. So we would bounce around, run around New York City together. So um, he is just a fun dude to get information from. So this one, you own a taco restaurant, which um, I just got one of the t-shirts. Uh, the social media shit is yeah, lit. Thank the you, branding man. is lit. It's dope, dude. Um, so listen, what's your white whale taco? Like what's a taco you've never had that you could probably make because you're a chef. You know what I mean? Like what's a taco that's eluded you? I'll tell you, it's um, not through lack of effort, <laughs> um, but have you seen the Taco Chronicles on, on Netflix? I mean, that is, it's insane. Yes, yes So the, I am, uh, like, I'm getting, I'm literally getting goosebumps right now thinking about it, is the Carnitas Tacos um, in, I think it's Michoacan in, in the Sonora province down there. I might have my geography wrong, but um, they just look like next level. Like you can't get, there's not going to be a place here. I mean, maybe there's some hole in the wall spot in Queens or something that has it. Um, but it seems to me like you need to have that big fire pit going with the lard and the pork and all that stuff. But I just love the religion around um, carnitas tacos. That, 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 the ones in that documentary in particular are the ones that I'm after. Okay. So that, that, that I mean, I, I have a feeling though that you're going to make that happen. I mean, as soon as I can travel to Mexico, I'm, I'm in. I, I, now that I have, like, the names and the destinations of the spots, thanks to that Netflix show, I mean, how do you not want to go? But that's it. That's for me. And it's not like you can't get a carnitas. We have carnitas. It's great. Right. But the ones right. in that one just look next level. So it, my, mine's one that, like, um, I, my wife teases me about this, and so do some of my friends. And they're always like, dude, stop acting like that because you can just do this yourself. And it's a, a, an amazing fried oyster taco. Now – I mean, I love making fried oysters and I've been to New Orleans like nine times, I think maybe 10. Um, so oysters, that's, that's my lifeblood, bro. And like, there's a restaurant in town here. It's a great taco place called Ocho Cinco, the little Exo Taco that I frequent both those places. And um, one of them, I swear to God, whenever I'm traveling, which is quite a bit sometimes, um, whenever I'm traveling on Instagram, I'll see a post. It's like, yo, oyster tacos today. And I'm like, what? 
And I refuse to make one myself because I can do that easily, but I want to yeah, go yeah. and see someone else's spin on it. You know what I mean? So I don't know why, like whether I've been in like Napa Valley at some like cool taco place, like a dope ass taco stand in like Brooklyn, all these places. Yeah. I'm like, let's see an oyster taco. And when they have one there, they're like, oh, sorry, dude, we just ran out. And I'm like, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's killing me. It's you. It's, so it's that's your hunt. You're hunting for that one. I yeah, for sure. That. So that's a good, that's a good call. That's a, that's definitely like, you know, an outside the usual line type of taco, but that's, uh, you know, I'm into that. There are places that are doing all sorts of everything in a taco. I think, you know, I've sort of adopted more of the philosophy though, that it's kind of like an Italian sandwich that it's really kind of all about the bread and the tortilla is so important. It's so important. So, um, I agree. I agree. Two things are, are, are really what's going to make the best taco, I think. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned like that, that Netflix documentary. Um, my partner and I, we have a bunch of things that we want to do as we get this thing off the ground. Like we want to do like one of our friends who we partner with um, had an idea of doing a video podcast called Lunchtime Tattoos, which we think would be dope. Bring some in, have a, you know, they get a tattoo. It's like pop up video. They're giving hints on the tattoo and you just talk. The other mm -hmm. one um, was an idea we had was called Taco Hunters. And basically it's like a series where we go around different parts of the country based on like urban legends and myths about like the dopest tacos. So awesome. um, if we, if we can ever get that off the ground, dude, obviously hey. we'll go to Lala and then we'll, we'll have you be a guest. <laughs> I'm, um, totally in. I'm in for Lala and beyond. So here's the deal, baby. Um, Saturday Night Live, uh, cultural icon and you from that area and you're a super funny guy. What's an SNL skit that you'd love to see that they really haven't put together? You mean like one that I would make up? Yep. Oh, man. I think there's got to be something. I mean, I'm in love with the Trump stuff. I think it's so spot on. I think it, that's, uh, I mean, of the new stuff. Um, you know, I, I w I'm not so into it lately, but I really love like the old Eddie Murphy stuff and when they used to really push the boundaries of things. That kind of like cringeworthy kind of comedy. So I think, you know, like everything else, there's going to be some humor found in this COVID stuff. I think when it's all said and done, you know, how crazy, I mean, like, I, who knows, right? Like, and I don't mean to make fun. I know it's a, a, dead, a deadly pandemic we're dealing with, but it's just weird. It's this invisible thing that we're dealing with, right? We, we don't, we gotta wear masks, we touch gloves. I got, I'm getting changed before I come home from work. I have to get in my underwear outside my house every time when I come home from the restaurant. Like, is that necessary? Like, what steps? Like, if I could see it, is it on this cup? I'm like, we were wiping down everything. And I just, I think that at some point, like, all right, guys, this, there's, it's we can figure this out it's not so crazy but like i think there's gonna be some comedy around that and i think it's healthy to, to, to take that kind of angle yeah i think so too I, i'd like to see the off color the off color shit that's that's like that, that touches borders is what i love like i always like drug history which is an awesome show i love that show i, I would love to see awkward interactions with people in history like maybe like Thomas Jefferson bumps into George Washington. Maybe we didn't know that Thomas might have hooked up with Martha because she was like a dish back in the day. <laughs> and like some awkward, like I'd like to see some of that. Um, oh, this is always funny. You know, I, I, you can't go wrong with that. Um, okay, so here's something that, um, that I, I want to hear your opinion on. Um, what's something that every restaurant customer should know? Hmm. You know, I think what it's, you know, I have a real soft spot for the restaurant owners and what it takes to, to get that done. I think it's kind of underestimated. And um, even actually, even as well-documented as it is, people say, oh my God, it's so hard to start a restaurant. It's so hard to be in the restaurant business. It's 10 times harder than that. So I think what people need to realize is that every concept, you know, Cheesecake Factory down to La La Taqueria started on in a bullshit conversation of like, hey, we should open up a place. We should sell this and we should do that. And from that point on to the moment you're getting your meal has been, you know, literal blood, sweat, and tears. You know, a lot of owners have swung hammers. They've, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not carpenters. They're not painters. They're not plumbers, but that's what they do. And then they tuck that all away when service comes around to be the smiling face in front of you. And I think it's just having like this understanding that like, yo, this is a really hard job. Uh, me asking for everything on the side and gluten-free and can I make this special and I brought this in can you put that in? it's like it's a fucking pain in the ass it's a system you know like it's no different than going to your job and saying hey you know what um actually we're gonna move the computer over here and the fax machine's not there anymore and the wi-fi password changes every day and it's okay that's annoying <laughs> it's annoying and that's like just particularly now I think I want I want guests to know that this has been you know, basically like for restaurant owners, dodging bullets and taking mortars on a daily basis in the beginning, hour by hour, and uh, just be compassionate and be fucking nice. 
Yeah. So that, that last thing you just said that, um, I mean, people should know what goes into it. And cause a lot of people like me, me included, um, and my friend and I actually at one point almost pulled the trigger on it. Like always, oh, I'd love to open a restaurant, whatever, but the amount of work that goes into it, you think that, you know, like you think, you know, but you don't, because it's just like, you're the accountant, you're the janitor, you're all these things at once. Yeah. Um, but the, the other thing I think about though, too, is you said, be nice. And my, my deal is, is be nice and respectful of the server, man. Like, like one thing, like when I'm, when I've interviewed people like been on job interviews and take people to restaurants to interview them, I watch it, it, Or if you're on a date, if listen, anybody listening right now, if you're on a date with somebody and that person is not classy and respectful to yeah. the, to the server jump dude, because yeah. she's going to be a dick or he's going to be a guy that you don't want to be around at all. You've got no right? chance. Yeah, exactly. So make sure that, that you treat those people with respect. And you know, sometimes you, you get a free drink out of the meal, but sometimes you don't either way. What happens is it's treating people right, man. And for those listening too, if you are in a job interview, listen to me and you're in a, in a, in an office, be nice to the person that's the receptionist. Every time I interviewed somebody after they left, I would come up to the receptionist and say, Hey, what'd you think of her? And they might be like, Oh man, she's a dick. And it's like, all right, well now I'm not going to hire that person. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't, you know, you can't go far with that. But to that end too, like, so what's, what's a big pet peeve you have as a restaurant owner? Um, Oh man, shit. That's, that's a whole separate podcast. I think you know, <laughs> it's, it's, um, that does annoy me. It's people being rude to staff and, and, you know, I, I kicked a Grubhub driver out of the restaurant last week and told her she could never come back for being wow. rude to the staff because it's at some point you have to, you know, yes, you have to be hospitable. Yes. You have to put on this face of, yes, we're here to serve you. Yes. I totally get it. Um, but yeah, being rude to my staff is, I mean, just thinking about now makes me angry and make, makes me want to call Grubhub to make sure they got the message, but, um, it's not an easy job and it's not a, it's a job where no matter what, you know, everyone's got their shit to deal with, but it's a job where no matter what you're dealing with, you know, your grandmother is sick, your cat died, you know, you're late on your bills or whatever the case may be. You're expected to be like, Hey, how are you? Um, I'm here to serve you. And that's not easy to do. People can't do that now in COVID and they don't leave their house, let alone people who have to go and then be in front of people. And, you know, look, some people are not meant to be in the business and that's probably part of it, but, um, being rude to my staff is definitely one of the biggest, biggest pet peeves. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that your staff knows that because of how well you treat people. Um, and by tossing that person out. Okay. So let's change gears. Um, you got to pick a fictional crew to roll with. It could be like a movie crew. It could be like the rat pack, but you got to roll with them. Like you're going to, you're going to do what they do. And like, that's your party crew, your chill crew. Man, like, like real people, like I can name actual people or like, like characters. Like I need a, you know, a funny guy, uh, like a, a, a set of characters. So like, it could okay. be like the, the Sandlot or somebody like that crew yeah. or somebody like that. Okay. But I can, I mix, I can mix and match my crew. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. It's your, it's your crew, I need, babe. I need somebody, I need like, I need like a Sonny from, from Goodfellas, uh, from uh, The Godfather. <laughs> I need somebody to be like, to say, am I fucking nuts? Can I do this? Is this crazy? Or is this then just to tell me? Um, I definitely need somebody who's chill to hang out like with, uh, like a Snoop, you know I mean? We, I mean, if he wants to get high, yeah, that's cool and all. Um, but somebody just to be like, yo, let's, let's chill out. You know, yeah. pump the brakes a little. I need yeah. somebody funny. I need somebody who can like keep the party going, keep the conversation going. So like a, um, um, like a Kevin Hart would be great. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, that's good. And you need you need somebody in there that is like you, but not so much like you. I think that's why you and I hit it off. It was like, yeah, like they can relate to you, like uh, like an athlete, like an athlete kind of frat boy, kind of like, you know, somebody who kind of has their shit together, but also can go off the rails. I'm trying to think of somebody who would be like that um, besides you. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there's probably a million different people, but like that would be my crew. I think like, four or five people and then the balance of it all you know you need people who are a little bit uh part of you in a way i know yeah. like throw down and cook with you so yeah that yeah person. That, that would be key so i love the mix and match thing because now i hear in that crew and i've been a part of your crew and rolled with you so i i can imagine that being a good time um you know i i, I thought about this question a lot too like the sandlot thing and, and, and i also thought like swingers like but those dudes, like, actually, I don't think are that good, good a set of dudes. You know what I mean? And then I think about, like, the girls and bridesmaids, and they seem like they're pretty fun, but then they're a bunch of chaotic messes. Um, so, I, my, you know, have you seen the show The Wire? I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah, yeah. 
I know. So some, so, so I mean, I this would not be my crew because it would end very badly. But like Bunk and Jimmy McNulty, like those two dudes, just like wrecking drinks and destroying half of Baltimore. You're like, what is wrong with these people? You know, it's not bad to have know those guys, and people don't want to fuck with you that much. That's true. Um, the Goodfellas, the Goodfellas crew um, would be interesting too. But I mean, because that crew seems awesome. But you end up, you no matter what, you end up getting murdered or going to jail for a long time. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, you need a, I mean, I, I need like a little bit of like a, maybe like a Paulie Walnuts from, from the Sopranos. I need a little bit of him too, because he's a little bit of funny, but he can also break somebody's nose if you have to, like that kind of guy. Yeah, like, yeah. And he's a little aloof, so he might go off on his own for a little while. I like, I, I respect that. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so let me ask you this. What, who, like, so one of the things that's awesome about you, right, you're in real estate, but you, you also work in advertising, you have a great personal brand, like this great creative thing that is constantly moving, but the brand still stays the same. That's something I really love about you. So like, as you change things, but st remain the same over the course of your life, what was like an idol you had growing up versus like maybe someone that you idolize now? I'll tell you, um, you know, growing up for me, it was all about sports. So I had the Michael Jordan posters, I had the Bo Jackson posters, um, you know, Don Mattingly, I was, you know, kind of like a New York fan, but I mean, the Michael Jordan thing was, was a different animal. Uh, and Bo Jackson was an icon back then. Uh, I looked up to them for what they could do athletically, you know, right. It was visual. It was entertaining. I could relate to it. It was like, holy crap. You know, Bo Jackson's like me, he plays baseball and football. He's guys, a stud. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, I think that as I've gotten older, obviously, and I think it's interesting because, you know, I've worked in so many different careers and trying to figure out, you know, what makes the most sense for me, but like trying, you know, being true to yourself and, and, and like learning who you are, it's okay to embrace that and, and where you kind of fit in. Um, I've learned that the, you know, going back to what it takes to open a restaurant and, and achieve success with that. Uh, there's a gentleman here, two guys here, uh, they own a concept called Bar Taco that started as a uh, two unit, uh, one unit, started as one location uh, as part of another restaurant that they had. And they are just insanely smart. Um, they've taken it from two restaurants to, I think they have over 60 or 70 restaurants across the country now between Bar Taco and Barcelona. Um, one guy is, you know, shirt unbuttoned down to his navel. Um, and party guy brings the vibe and the other guy is like a Harvard straight guy, but no nonsense, no bullshit. And he will come at you with facts and he can bring up historical references. He can, you know, quote legal phrases and throw them at you. But I would say Andy Forsheimer and um, Sasha are the two biggest idols to me now because the amount of money they've put, I think about $130 million each in their pockets with their brands, building it from nothing. So that's a real world hero to me, a real world. Those are guys are real world icons um, and they've done it on their own. You know, they've had investors and lawyers and all that stuff, but uh, it's been all through, through them, which is like super impressive to me. That's an awesome answer. You know, the, the, the first part of that, I agree, at least for my, my choices are a little bit similar to yours. Um, Bo Jackson, definitely growing up, dude. Like I, everybody had the ball player poster, oh, so right? The poster with the bat, the, the, the yeah, shoulder yeah. pads, and the bat, dude. Like, um, and I love that he could just do his, his own different thing. So that was really cool to me. And like, um, you know, because I was into sports and stuff like that too. And like, I, I was into some creative stuff too, like comic books and things. And I, like, when we were growing up, was when like the Dark Knight Returns came out with Frank Miller. And I remember like reading that, being like, oh my god, like someone thought of this like someone wrote this story and just yeah. being like i want to do that and then as i got older and started to do like media buying before moving into like account service and creative stuff i started to be like oh well, maybe i can't be creative which really upset me as a person so as i got older i was like screw it i'm just gonna keep doing that and then i started yeah. to write creative stuff and, and commercials and stuff so now i, I kind of look at people that are like at a bigger scale than, than you're talking about but i've got some locally like my friend jeff canales does this and um uh, my wife dabbles in some of this type of stuff too, but people that will just say, all right, I think this is cool. I'm going to try this. Like Ice Cube is somebody I've talked about before that I love. Like this guy is a great songwriter, but like the movie Friday, like Homeboy wrote that. And that movie is hilarious. I didn't right? even know that. Wow. Yeah. So um, and it's a classic movie, but a lot of people you'll see are like Lady Gaga or like Bradley Cooper is another guy too, um, that I like everybody thinks Bradley Cooper is super hot. And I mean, he's obviously a good looking dude. Um, and he was great in The Hangover, which was great, right? And then he's, you know, and then yeah. he's good in like serious movies. 
Um, and then I, you know, I, I was so learned, I learned about during the make. Yeah, super awesome. And then during um during a Star Is Born, he taught himself to play guitar. And like the lead, the intro song where he's like killing it at that concert, he wrote that. And like right before they started filming, he hadn't even played the guitar. So I, to me, when I see people that are trying to do different, like my dad will teach himself how to like. My dad is like retired now, so homeboy like will take tin cans from his neighbor's house and is building like tin can people in his garage or like teach himself how to like fold napkins and. I don't know. I, now I try to I look at life, people. man. Yeah, they try to do like different shit. Really, really. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to do. Because I'm gonna. I mean, I failed so many times already, dude. Like, what's another failure for me? But if it's something I can do and maybe hook somebody up with, help somebody up, why not, right? Yeah, you know, it's said so often that like if you start chasing money, you'll be chasing it your whole life. And you know, obviously, everyone needs money to to survive. But there's nothing like finding something that you really like to do. And for me, it's it's helping people. You know, particularly in the restaurant space where they. Um, you know, main, it's not such an inclusive community. You're not, they're not bringing in your neighborhood restaurant. Like, Hey, look what we're doing. We changed from this to save a couple of bucks. You're like very in your own four walls. But if you can break down those, if I can break down those walls and get in there and help people make from making bad decisions and that, that'd be awesome. Dude, I, I, I'm with you exactly about like the chasing the money thing. So, I mean, I, I love teaching obviously cause I do that and that brings me great joy. But if you find something that you love to do, the money's gonna show up because yeah. you know, if you wanna be great at anything, like you own restaurants and you sell real estate and that's, and, and you've been doing this for a while and you're good at it. But if you're gonna be good at something, you have to do 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. And you can't do that if it's something you don't love. You know? Right, no, no way. Or you'll be miserable, you know? Yeah, I know people ask me all the time, you know, I get up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning to do some of the things that I have to do. And you know, my wife is like, what the what are you doing? And I'm like, it's the, I can't explain it. It's the only way that I can get myself in a mode to, to really deliver what I want to do. And then I'm not, I'm not regretful of it at all. Okay. Well, speaking of regrets, let's get into this next question. Oh, fuck. So yeah, yeah. What, tell us one of your best drunk adventuring stories as a young in New York city prior to <laughs> being married and things like that. Like give us, give us one snippet of, of um, what the dip set was like tearing it up. Dude. <laughs> Dude, I can't remember any of that stuff. I have no idea. I think, you know, I will tell you that I think some of my best memories was that job at Mindshare in Ogilvy because it was, I say all the time, it was like, the only thing that was different about college than college really was that, you know, you really had to be somewhere every day and, you know, you had to get up and all that. But it wasn't, it was like a halfway house. It was like saying, hey, okay, here's this is your life in college. You know, you go from your senior year of doing basically no work and partying every day to going to doing a little bit more work and partying every day. And it was fucking wild. And we had access to like, you know, we were having lunch at least. We were making like, I remember I negotiated my salary from $27,000 a year to like, no, sorry, from 24.5 to 27,000. I was like, yeah, $27,000 a year. God, I, I was like, I was that. like 25, dude. Dude, that's right. I stuck it to, I forget what her name is, but I remember her calling me fine. You got it, but don't tell anybody else. And basically hung up on me. And, um, you know, those days were, were the best. I mean, I remember like being 22 and having two martini lunches and going back to the office and I'm like, this is the life. And then, the coming, and then at the end of the day, having two tickets to a Yankees World Series game. It was like, it was a, it was a dream. And I don't, I cannot recall very many details. I'm sorry. I'm 43 now and I'm married and I maybe compartmentalize that. I don't know. Maybe I need a night out with you to refresh my memory. Do well, the one I was, I was going to share one because same, same season on everything you just said. I was just going to share one um, that I recall um, because a lot of different baseball games, those things like that. But one night there was like an upfront party and they had it on the deck of the USS Intrepid. I was thinking of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're up there partying and they're bringing in like TV stars and stuff to try to get our agencies to spend more money with their TV channels. So we're like yeah. partying with like Dan Titus and the, the, the father from like that 70s show. It was a Fox party. Yeah. And it got lit and like we're sitting there partying it up and like we're wearing like suits and everything, and, like not paying for anything, drinking all top shelf not drinks. You know what I mean? And then afterwards, like somebody from one of the networks was like, yo, do you guys want to roll with us to this club? And we're like, of course we do. And it was that 80s club that had like played all 80s music. And you and I walked oh, up yeah. and there's like of that place. I yeah, forget, I man. They had the smiley face. Yes. And they had the bleachers. Uh, where people yes. would send the bleachers and like people were hooking up on the bleachers. I remember walking in there and we're like wearing our, our ties from like the upfront and like people are dressed in club clothes. And they feel like, I remember feeling like we were such cool like stars. And like that night, I remember going to that party and beforehand we were talking like, let's not make this a long night. And then at like four o'clock in the morning, we're stumbling out of that club like, oh shit, that was pretty yeah, intense. That sounds, that, 
that sounds, I vaguely remember that. That's uh, for sure. And that's exactly what it was like. And I wonder if that's what it's like now. I mean, I don't know if there's any restrictions, but that's it. If you can get into that field uh, as a transition, <laughs> I mean, you're still kind of in, right? That's kind of like. You yeah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know that it's still the same, but it's because I'm older now, man. Like, I don't think that like the young ones can be like, Hey, we're going, you know what I mean? But I, I imagine in the morning at your house, you don't need to go out for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Having like my wife and I solving the problems, listening and like doing like sing alongs to Spotify oh playlists, God. you know what I mean? <laughs> but it, it makes life good. Um, okay. So what's your biggest challenge that you face as a creative person? Yeah, that's funny that you say that because it's like um, today in particular, this week, really, I was just was talking to somebody that I feel like I'm stuck in, it really started at the end of last week, like stuck in like between second and, and third gear. Like I'm, I, I cannot get, and it's a time where for what I do, you know, working with restaurants, it's, you know, time to provide and time to create. Um, for me, I think it's like stuck between when I, when I don't know if I can inject humor, if I got to play it straight, if this is purely informational, um, you know, in a lot of ways, I, I think that I just got to, when I, when I feel that way, I just start documenting stuff and I'll just turn on the camera and start talking or I'll go for a ride and drive my market and see what spaces are available. And, you know, and that kind of gets me out of it. I start focusing more on documenting and not so much on creating. And I think I get the most engagement on stuff when I just turn on the camera like this and I just say, look, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I feel like this, you know, it's kind of like the Kardashian thing. Like, why do people watch it? Because they're waiting for the next train wreck or they're waiting for me to, I don't know, cry or something. I don't know what, but, um, and then it gets me like, if you see me fucking crying on a video, by the way, just like delete me. Don't add me anyway. I'll never fucking do that. I don't know why it's not me, but um, I mean, I would do that. I could totally see myself crying. <laughs> you do it right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why am I could do it right now? Um, but yeah, I think the authenticity part of it, like for a long time, I was like, I'm not even know if you know this, but my, my, the, the restaurant that I started literally on the back of a napkin, you know, you start to get other people involved. You start to do, start to bring in partners, you start to bring investors and all this shit. And um, I actually got fired by my partners. You know, I could keep my equity, but they're like, we don't want you. I was being a dick. I was done with it. It was, it was really my fault. I basically asked for it, but I was like, I don't want anybody to know that, you know, that's doesn't look good as a restaurant guy. But then I was like, everybody makes mistakes. And then when mm -hmm. I take the, the bullets out of everybody's gun, I'm like, what are you going to say to me? Yeah, we fired you. Yeah, I know. I know. And you still have that restaurant and I'm doing this. So, you know, you take these things and you move on and you adapt. And I think that's part of your story and part of your creative process is how do I take that experience and make it into a creative piece of content that's going to help somebody. And I think a lot of it is like, you know, for that, it's like, okay, how do you navigate partnerships? You know, how was I able to get fired by still kept my equity and wound up leaving there getting paid and they're, going downhill now, I mean, that's a real business issue. Yeah. So, um, I think it's taking those little beast pieces of um, content that may be not so easy to expose to everybody, but once you put it out there, it's so fucking freeing. It's so free. It's like, you know, same with real estate. Hey, this deal didn't go through. This landlord didn't hire me. That, that story is what keeps people engaged in you. You just posting selfies of, you know, you at a bar or, you know, hot chicks in bikinis or guys with their abs. Well, what, who's going to engage with that? Right. So, for sure. They're just going to look and keep scrolling, dude. They want the story and, and that failure, right? Every good story, like if Harry Potter was just a, 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 just a school year of them hanging out, it wouldn't be as interesting. I mean, I, you know, you, you got you to throw some ogres and some other shit yeah, in right, there. Yeah, right. Of course. Um, yeah. To me, like, that's interesting. You said that about the documentation too, because for me, I need to take time to be, to be when I'm working on creative projects, um, it's not that I can't hit deadlines and stuff. I can, but I need to make sure that I take time because I always want to do all these things with other people and help people out. And I always want to say, yes, I don't ever want to be in the no business, but yeah. sometimes I got to work to make time. Like, okay, I need to put two hours in my calendar and yeah. I'm just going to write for two hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, that's a big thing. That's a big thing that helps me with my content creation. And I, and I just actually started being more diligent with it. Like these past two weeks is blocking off time like really taking your time. And for me, I literally put in, okay, go for a run, come back, shower, eat breakfast, like those things until I get into a real cadence of things. And I'll say, okay, from, you know, 1130 to 1230 today, this is what I'm doing. And that's it. And it's, it's easier said than done, but at least the practice of, of getting in, in uh, the habit of, of doing that will get you into like doing it on a more regular basis and realizing to focus on one thing at a time at this specific time. And that, that has helped for sure. 
Beautiful, man. Okay, so now we're going to do the lightning round. So I'm going to throw five questions at you that you uh, have no preparation for. Let's go. You ready? Okay. So. Number one, you're a younger man. Think about the time when you're young and partying across New York City. Would you rather go out for the night partying across New York City with a young in his prime Mickey Mantle or a young in his prime Derek Jeter? Mickey Mantle. Okay. For sure. Why, 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 why such a quick uh, Derek, answer? Man? Derek Jeter seemed like he did his thing, but he wanted to do it on his own. Like, he's the kind of guy who would probably be, like, texting in the corner. Like, where are you going? He's like, I got to go. You're like, oh, I thought you were hanging out. Whereas Mickey Mantle would, like, bring, him, bring you with him. True. You know, like, Jeter would be cool, and you get all the thing. But the other night, he'd probably, like, leave with everybody, and you're, like, going to get a burger by yourself. Yeah, good, good. Ooh, I like, I, I like the <laughs> rationale there. Um, if, if I, I love yeah, it. I think it's great. Great. Okay. So what do you enjoy more, scoring a touchdown or hitting a home run? Touchdown. Yeah, touchdown. You know what? I feel like it's more – you've accomplished more. It's more physical. Like, sometimes you hit a home run and you're like, whoa, shit. I didn't know that was coming. With the touchdown, you sometimes you, ha- you can feel it coming and you're like, oh, yeah. And there's more like – I don't know. I feel like that's way more exciting. Plus, it's seven points versus – I don't know. I don't know why the points matter, but it feels – it just feels better. It feels bigger. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so I, I love the answer because sometimes, like, you put a bad swing on the ball and it goes out and you're like, oh, man, wow. Um but a, a touchdown, though, too, like, you, you have to earn that. You get bruised. Like, yeah. you're stung, and all of a sudden you're like, but I did this, you know? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the sound of a home run, that feeling is fantastic, but touchdown is inches it out, I think, a little bit. Okay. Uh, would you rather be stranded on Jurassic Park with no chance for escape or stuck on a deflating tube in um, Amityville, I think? Is that where the Jaws movie takes place and the, shark, <laughs> the shark's in the water? Oh, so you're stuck on a deflating tube in Jaws or you're stranded on Jurassic Park? Dude, I love I love the beach and the water and all that stuff. Um, but there's like something about sinking or like a boat like being stuck in the water. For, I mean, the shark thing kind of like is like an afterthought. But um, and I don't, know, I don't really like the woods either. If I'm not gonna be in Jurassic Park or that, I think I'd have to take my chances. Even as much as I hate the as as much as I hate the thought of being in a boat, particularly at night, like no lights. Like uh, I think I'll go with that because the woods. So I, I, got, I go for a hike on the woods over here. It's like a quarter mile away from the hutch. And I'm like, oh, shit, that was going to happen out here. <laughs> I I I'm like a mile from my house. So, yeah, I got no shot at that. Oh, man. Okay. Um, which do you prefer, the back page of the New York Post or the front page of Rolling Stone magazine? Oh, wow. The Post, the back page of the Post. The back page of the Post was so iconic to me growing up. Like, even, I mean, it sounds like we're like 100 years old. But, like, I would buy the the paper on the way to the bus, like in the morning, strictly for the back page of the post. I mean, that was when the Yankees were ripping, the Yankees Mets feuding, they were dominating the Red Sox. So it was like, oh yeah, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see this. So for sure. I mean, even now, I, you know, you don't pick up papers nearly as much, but like the front and back of the post are, oh, yeah. uh, are always like, did they really just say that? Venomous, yeah. venomous headlines. Like what? Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh man. Like I remember Tom Brady was visiting, um, Giselle in New York City and he had just like hurt his ankle and was bringing her flowers because he's I mean as much as I hate to say it they say he's just a really good dude so he's wearing like the the the, the boot and um bringing his girlfriend flowers and it's like girly man wears booties and carries flowers and it was like what the guy's bringing his girlfriend flowers but of course I saw that and I'm like you I like love to, to yeah yeah and, and any, any knock on Tom Brady I'm down for I don't care yeah for sure happy flowers <laughs> they were all dead already. He probably exactly. like, the guy was about to throw him out. He's like, I'll give you a dollar for him. Yeah, exactly. So um, what do you prefer, a great taco or a great margarita? You got to pick one. Oh, shit. Uh, a great taco. Okay. I think, I think, I think uh, if I'm in a place and I sense a bad margarita, I'll just eliminate the lime juice and, and all the other stuff and just go for the tequila. I can't stand, I cannot stand a bad uh a bad margarita that's that's a ruin of it. and a bad taco you can kind of make it work you know like eh, all right, that's all right yeah yeah I, I can i'll throw some hot sauce on yeah, yeah hot sauce totally exactly um okay so let's close this up but tell us what's something you want to share with people like what website should they be checking out what what can they do to help your cause to make restaurants not close and keep that the lifeblood of our country moving well i mean the number one thing you need to do is go out into your local neighborhood and go to uh the mom and pop, whatever one that you go to uh, and buy whatever you can afford to buy, whether that's a meal, a gift card, a shirt, a hat, um, 
they, you know, the thing for these restaurants is that they miss the connection. They miss the conversation. They miss, you know, being hospitable to people and they need the money. So um, going there, even in your gloves and your mask and everything, will show them that you're still thinking about them and you're reaching out. So for me personally, with my goal of trying to, you know, eliminate the failure rate or lower the failure rate of restaurants in this country, um, it would mean the world to me to go out and see you guys buy stuff. Um, I would love if you tagged me in some places in your neighborhood that have are selling shirts because I'm trying to create this whole new summer wardrobe of restaurant shirts and hats. So um, I would love to support that way. Um, you know, and, and for me personally, that's, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, um, LinkedIn, whatever, I'm all over the place uh, working on a YouTube channel. But I think the most important thing to me is that you support your local restaurants. They're so important that, you, you, you know, even if you don't consider yourself much of a foodie, you have emotional ties to some place in your neighborhood and you should go there and uh, make sure that they're doing okay because the odds are a lot of them are not and, and could use the help. Man, super well said, dude. So listen, all y'all out there, follow Kyle on Instagram. It's off the charts, super entertaining. Listen to the National Restaurant Owners Podcast, whether you own a restaurant or not. Um, buy one of these shirts. It's dope. Um, all the links will be in the bottom of our YouTube descriptor. So listen, Kyle, this has been awesome. Being around you is awesome, whether it's virtual or in person. Next time it's over tacos and margaritas. You feel me? Yeah, man. I want to, I want to, maybe we can cook carnitas on your, on your show. That would be the Let way we should do it. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Listen, Spashcock Nation, on behalf of Kyle, thank you so much for listening and watching and doing what you do. Support local restaurants. Spashcock out. See you. Later. Thanks, man.